Hey everybody, welcome to Rock and Joke and Talkin'. I'm Kelly V, the Pop Pixie, and I'm the host and creator here. I have a wonderful co-host with Steve Lips Kubo, and we talk to so many epic bands all over the world, big bands and small bands, and so many people at a time. We have some epic co-hosts that join us, like Lay and Ben Cable, who adds so much to the show with his comedic comedy and uh, just lightheartedness. Uh, we have so much fun here at Rock and Talk and Talking. I'm very, very proud. We have another epic co-host all the way from the UK with Jackie Chambers of Girls School in Citeria. I'm really, really proud to have her here. She is so much fun and just an angel of the metal scene. We talk to so many epic bands all around the world. We deal with so much music through the decades from the classics right up to the brand new bands. I'm very, very proud to do this and to talk about the pandemic and how it's affected our music industry. But don't worry, metalheads, before we get you back out there appreciating and playing the music that we love to hear so much. And before we get out there to see these epic shows and droves that we love so much, we are here to keep you safe. We are here to chat, we are here to keep things lively, and we are here to keep the music going because it is what we do at Rock and Joke and Talking with so much art. I want to say thank you to all my epic co-hosts from Liz to Jackie to Lane, and of course all the behind the scenes help from my incredible friend Roy Stegman and the epic occasional host with Sean Raven Chain. It is a family here at Rock and Joke and Talking, and I'm very, very honored. We hope to keep you rocking all over the world. We have a very special show extension called Rare Disease Meets Rockstar where we introduce some very special people to some other very special people in the hopes of ending discrimination all over the world and to raise awareness. Thank you so much for my family at Rockin' Token Talkin'. And if you'd like to become part of that family or to reach out and get involved, here's how you do it. Don't be shy. Thank you so very, very much to 33 and the third entertainment. Keep it metal, everybody. Be kind to yourself and each other. Kelly V, the Pop Pixie. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to a really special interview with Raven Chain and Adam Gerald. Wow. Hello, hello. How are you doing? I hear ya. There you are. Oh, great shirt. Thank you. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Lots of water. <laughs> I know why. I know why. Glad you made it. Um, I guess he's just installing Zoom right now. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm. How's things going down in Florida right now? It's fucking, I'll show you, fabulous. Fabulous. Um, let's see.
There's the <laughs> temperature. Shut up. I don't know if it, if it translates, but it's like minus 20 in the morning here. I can I no. still can't do the conversion all my yep. time and that's Celsius, right? Yeah. It's yeah. fucking cold. It's yeah. like you go outside and the the saliva and the snot just instantly <laughs> freezes in your mouth, like takes your breath away cold. Yeah. I remember I mean, those I remember those days living up north i no absolutely not <laughs> i miss florida so much so much oh man i'm so nervous right now i can't lie no need to be nervous i know i know it'll go well <laughs> it always does it always does i know but i could just edit this part out right Oh, sure, you can edit whatever you want. I never do, though. Never do. All right. I guess that's better. Um, I still have my joint, though. And coffee. Lots of essential. And coffee, yes. Less mercury. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, love it. Yeah, very much so. It definitely applies. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, so what is your, what is your advice for dealing with nerves? Like, do um, you get nervous be before a show? Yeah, always. Yeah. What do you do? I, I drink. <laughs> <laughs> Half the people say that. Half the people uh, say that. But then you yeah. run the risk of like being too messy to perform. No? Yeah. I'm doing a shitty show. Yeah. <laughs> That's but, uh, never happened though. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's a, a, a difficult balancing act is mm -hmm. to uh, to drink enough to not be nervous uh, and then not drink too much to where you're not slurring. Yeah. So that's most of the time I will uh, I will actually perform without drinking. I mean, there's there, don't get me wrong. There's been many, many shows where I've been fucking wasted, but <laughs> Thank God not many of them have seen the light of day in video form. There's a few, <laughs> there's a few out there, though. I'm like, I've actually called the PS. Like, Please take that down. That's just horrible. Oh, that's too bad. I guess it's a fine line. Yeah, it's a nerve wracking thing. I mean, have you ever gone to a concert where they've just been too messed up to even play? Oh, yeah. I mean. It sucks, doesn't it? Ma Manson for one. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've, I was, actually, I, I've actually seen Manson like stumble around the stage and about probably four songs in, that was it. He just left and never came back. Here we go. <laughs> Maybe we won't bring that up. Yeah. Well, I, who knows? Like I said. Who knows? Who knows? Connected, connected, connected. Hello? I wonder if he knows you got to hit the, your little camera button and turn it on. It doesn't automatically turn on. I don't know. All I see is a gray square with his name on it. Yeah, no picture I... yet. He'll figure it out. <laughs> Connecting. See? See? This technology is it's fucking insane. It's crazy, but yeah, it's like when it messes up, it's this stressful thing. Now it says connecting again, so. Man, I've been looking for a cool pair of shades and with everything closed, my only two options were Walmart and the dollar store, and I did not find a cool pair of shades to warrant this interview. <laughs> dollar, dollar Tree. I, I used to, you know, I used to do like the old ZZ Top song and buy the cheap sunglasses. There we go. Hey, nice to meet you. Welcome. Nope, no audio yet. <laughs> Got video, no audio. Or is that on your side? You does it make a difference if I do that? Can you hear me now? You have to do sign language. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh 
don't think so. He's making that like blank stare towards. Yeah, the <laughs> it's, it's usually the face I make when I'm sitting there, like, well, what the fuck do I do? I know, and it's funny. It's like these are only forty minutes, and then they cut me off, and it's like five minutes is always this <laughs> times four or five people. <laughs> That's why COVID needs to hurry up and go the fuck away so you can get a production team in there and I know do live person interviews. Mm-hmm. 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 I agree, man. I agree. Wholeheartedly. I want that fancy desk. Oh yeah. I, then I know I'm like official, we were talking right? like we were talking last night, the whole David Letterman's exactly right? the desk and the nice couch. So people know they've made it, but so also I know I've made it. <laughs> <laughs> the desk. We'll just, go, want, we'll just go to a thrift store and get you some old desk. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Do. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, now I hear you. Yay! Now we can okay. hear you and see you. Jesus Welcome. Christ. It's like I've never, <laughs> I've never worked a computer before. Don't feel Zoom bad. Oh, this, this stuff fucks with me the whole time. I got into it. I'm like, what? What am I doing wrong? And then I looked at the bottom, and I got to turn my own camera on. I was like, oh, that's why. Well, it seems like every time I use, oh wait, you guys can hear me, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't hear myself, so I don't know what the hell is going on. Um, it seems like every time I use Zoom, I have to do like some sort of different settings or something. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. I, I yep. think I think it like it's different for everybody depending what platform you're using. Like I'm on Mac, so mine's through, you know, Apple. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 We, we right here are doing a fabulous commercial that Zoom should just automatically sponsor. I think right here, the easy <laughs> yeah, use. Yeah. not knowing how to do anything. <laughs> Anyways. Well, how are you, man? Why don't you introduce yourself and who you are? Uh, Andy Gerald. Um, I've been a musician for, well, since I was around 12 or 13, I guess I started playing guitar, but professionally probably since I was around 25, I guess. Okay. And I'm 42 now. So a long time. I know. I know. Oh, wow. And um, how, where are you located right now? Right now I live in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. How are things going down there? Uh, good. I mean, um, it was weird when the, when, uh, the COVID thing first happened, like they literally just shut the whole strip down. So it was just like, like post-apocalyptic looking movie. Like it was crazy. Yeah. Normally when, like, it doesn't matter. Like a lot of people would say, oh, you know, this is the season for Vegas and blah, blah. But in reality, like if you go down to the strip at any time of year, it's completely packed. Yeah. I mean, there's no, yeah. Yeah. There's no, I mean, it's just people walking all over the place and, um, and yeah, when you drove down there, it was, it was crazy to just see no one walking down the street. It's, uh, I'm sure Tampa, Sean's same thing, but Toronto has the longest street in the world, Young Street, and it was just eerie to stand there because never before, and I would try this, to try to go somewhere, anywhere in Toronto and be alone. And not have anybody in your view at all. There's always somebody. It yeah. was impossible to do it. It was a really creepy feeling. I agree. Mm. Um, I think that I think that's one of the biggest thing that's that's affecting people during during this pandemic or whatever you want to call it is uh, just the fact that uh, it, it's really bringing awareness to to how connected we are to people, even if we feel like we're uh, you know disconnected and and uh, uh, and like to be alone. The fact that when it's pushed on you, it's a uh, it's a very eerie feeling. It, it's very uh, humbling. Yeah, I made a I made a just a stupid comment in one of my friends' posts the other day that I said I, I want to start hating people in real life again, <laughs> <laughs> because or in person because it's just like like when it first started, I was the same way. I was like, this is fine. I'm used to just staying at home and being by myself. And then, you know, you take for granted just the tiny little like, you know, times that you would go out and, and hang out, you know, with your friends and uh, which is not very often for me. But but when you when you're forced to not be able to do it, yes. then you're just like, oh, man, this is after a couple of months, I was like, all right, 
I, I get it. Like, this is brutal now. But so, Vegas, Vegas is like pretty much starting to open a little bit. Normally, I guess the numbers have gone down a little bit. And they're um, like my wife, for example, she just got her second dose of the vaccine yesterday. So it's starting to roll out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, down, down here in Florida. Um, you guys are just, you guys have just ignored it all together. Dude, yeah. This is, this is, this is like the wild West down here. And, yeah. and I, I have to say, you know, my wife, my wife is a, is a doctor. So I'm not like just spitting in science's face, but I think, I, I think there is a, a bunch of fudging of the numbers out there that has led to uh, more, more fear probably than it is warranted. I mean, obviously it, it, it's a real virus. It's making people sick. It, it has, you know, at least assisted in killing some people. So we can't discount that, but yeah. I mean, know, I think I, when, when you look at, when you look at just the, you know, the cases, I guess that giant number is, is terrifying. Yes. Um, and, and uh, whether it, contributed you know a hundred percent or you know even 20 percent to deaths you know if it had anything to do with someone dying then that and they wouldn't have died otherwise then i mean you have to count that right i mean i don't think yeah. there's a lot of i don't think there's a lot of um you know covid just oh this person died from covid it's like they had they had the virus and it made them sick and it made you know something else more complicated right which led to comorbidities yeah so i mean regardless it's like i i still haven't gotten it and pretty much everyone i know has had it and um i mean even my wife had it a, like a while ago about probably six months ago or something but it was so it was so mild that mm -hmm. it was like she had symptoms for basically like a night and then we had the the people come they actually that like, came to our house and did a test and she got her results back and she tested positive and I tested negative. So her case was so mild so, that yeah. she didn't even like give it to me. And right. we're like That's... literally in the same house all day long. Like, so the same thing with actually with her, um, with her mom, her mom's husband had it and her mom didn't get it. <laughs> so oh, wow. it's just, it's just really it's weird. Yeah. yeah it's, I... it's so, it's so strange. It's almost like it's, it's programmed to get certain people. I mean, I well, strange. Yeah, that almost. Seems. Yeah. I, I know it's, people who have died. I know people who know people who have died or have had family die. And I think it strikes a different chord when it becomes a reality yeah. to you personally. Um, I also am just wondering how you know florida is opening wide up you know and i oh, we've think we've been open we've been, been open i don't think right? they were closed and now we're stuck in i'm stuck in toronto where they've had this wishy-washy shutdown of things right so it's like we had a curfew we had you know everything shut down but the pharmacies and walmart and you know it's like you have to do one or the other completely shut down or stay open so it runs through the populace i think yeah well the well i don't think they should just let it run through the populace because that would kill a lot more people but um the problem is is that like shutting down the whole economy and the government like like in america at least the government not helping anyone with you know, helping pay their rent or doing any of that stuff. You, you, you can't do that. Someone has to work, right? I mean, yeah. people have to pay their bills and, and, you know, and so there's, there's no way to, um, I think the, the, the countries that did just completely shut down, well, their governments subsidize everyone and, you know, gave them the money to pay their rent and pay their bills and blah, blah, blah. And, and it seemed to work. Um, at, at least it worked a little bit better, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. America's weird though because you know we just it's just like one shut half down America would be wow. I just don't know I don't even know if that's even possible I mean Vegas did it Vegas did it for a little bit basically shutting down the strip and, and everywhere and 
people went bonkers and and the, the governor basically had to sort of like open things up as far as like okay well you can have 20 percent capacity right so that's what he started to do and if the numbers kind of stayed the same then he sort of like went up a little bit and the numbers went up of course and then he had to re-shut down stuff a little bit and he kind of did this back and forth thing until it sort of leveled itself out but you you know I mean you, you notice the trend every time he opens stuff up the, the numbers would go up obviously I mean that's like of course um but once they did the mass thing uh they did a mandatory mass thing in Las Vegas and once they did that it really helped um at least the, it helped the cases for sure um but now I just saw I actually just read today that there are, uh, I think three or four of the casinos are gonna be 24 7 again um because oh, wow. because the numbers have steadily gone down and like i guess yeah. the trend and i mean you know the with the vaccine and stuff people getting it even you know even though it's not going to the general public you're you know if you're vaccinating you know anyone in the public at least those people you know aren't getting it so and spreading it so i mean we'll see what happens i'm i'm hoping that by the end of the summer m- the majority of the general population will have the vaccine and, uh, it it looks like it's on par for that. At least I know down here, they are they're they're the vaccines are going like crazy. I mean yeah. that that's another thing. You know, our governor did keep things open, but he's also made it a point to get as as much as the vaccine here as possible. I, I know, like I said, my wife, she is swamped. I mean, swamped with uh, the people coming in to get vaccines and. Uh, you know, you, so your thing. your wife probably got it like a few months ago, right? Or like what? Like in- I, actually, the the strangest thing is my wife and I both got it like last year around February March, like right as it was starting to oh, come no, I out. I mean, I know I meant the vaccine, but yeah, go ahead. Oh no, dude, I hate needles. I'm I'm not getting a vaccine. <laughs> this is a topic that Sean and I have talked about a couple of times on the on on the interview show. His his feelings about the vaccine, and I. I think it comes down to this. You're either taking a risk with getting sick or having complications from the vaccine, something that isn't truly tested 100%, or you're at risk for catching a virus that may make you sick, you know, and and it's a choice, you know, of. Yeah, that's that's tough because I feel like. There are a lot of people who are very afraid of it. Well, but, but why are they afraid of it? Is there any, there's no, there's no real, there's no real proof that it is hurting anybody. I think the fear is the fact that it hasn't been tested. I have a very complicated medical history. I have a lot of rare disorders and autoimmune diseases. So something like that could really wreak havoc on me. I'm kind of no, that's, afraid. No, that's true. Right? That's true. And, and that's, I feel like that's, that's more warranted, I think. But I mean, if you're in, but I mean. Also but just too, in like, general, people are scared of everything and nervous well, and scare everything. Yeah. But the manipulation we felt with our government and the way it's gone along, nobody feels trusting. Well, that that's fair. I mean, I'll give you that. Which right, which, is, which is terrible. <laughs> I I just <clears throat> for for me, um, I'm not I'm not what they would call like a, an anti-vax or anything like that. Like all my kids had, you know, had their vaccines all the way up until they were 18. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, of course, I did growing up as well. Um, and aside from being a slightly psychotic, I don't think it affected me too much. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, I don't know. I It just to me and. and everybody has their own choice and that's what's so great about being alive and being a person and especially being american is you have your own choice and me personally i just i don't think there's enough uh testing or i i don't think there's any possible way even president trump and his whole team uh that they came up with with a safe vaccine in less than a year i i don't think it's possible president trump didn't come up with anything <laughs> yeah, that, or we all be do, fucking shooting up with bleach, anything. you know? Yeah, or disinfectant. Um, but well, what about this? What about what about let's say let's say in a year from now, after everyone's or the majority of people have been vaccinated, and it's it, you know, it's 
proven to work and be safe, then would you take it? Or is it just the time that it's just so quick, I guess? It, pretty much to me, if, I, th I think, yes, it's, it's just, here. it's too yeah. sudden. It, it's too sudden for me to put something into my body that I have no idea exactly what the components are. Um, you know, like I said, my wife has even sat down and she's like, she's like, well, why is, why is that component in there? It doesn't need to be in there. And I'm like, well, I don't know. You tell me you're the doctor. And I, <laughs> so as time progresses and it has proven, uh, you know, and, and I'm talking maybe a couple of years um, and they're still being draconian and saying we can't travel as musicians without the vaccine, then, then I will consider doing it. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's going to be a thing when, well, yes. I mean, I wanted yes. to talk, I wanted to bring that up with you too. I mean, you know, uh, the, the whole music thing. I mean, it, it's, yeah, I haven't played a gig since last January or something like that. January, February. So it's been a year, literally just sitting, doing nothing. I mean, is no. it your label that's saying you can't or are you, or, or is it you personally? There's, there's no, no one open. Nobody. There's no and, place to and play. The, and the venues that would be ballsy enough to open, nobody's insuring shows. The insurance companies will not insure them. So therefore, you take the liability and nobody can afford that. I'm learning that it's like anything over 2,500 requires approval by the state, approval by the mayor of the city, approval by the fire department as to how you're gonna keep it COVID safe. So you're stuck to, to things under 2,500. So like your largest bars maybe, right? But then- Yeah, but I, I can't imagine I mean, I don't even, I can't imagine them opening even that many people. I mean, right now, I think, <coughs> like in Vegas. <coughs> they the, are in uh, Florida. Are they not, John? It's crazy. Um, I mean, well, we just had the Super Bowl here and there, yes. there hasn't been, there hasn't been like a huge spike in COVID. So. Oh, um, right. Yeah. With the, with, yeah, yeah. Something like that. But I'm talking about venues where they're like, you know, <coughs> there's no seats they're just standing like, like shoulder to shoulder type of thing. Um, there, there, there's a, I don't know if you're familiar with Janice Live in Tampa. It's a uh, it's an outdoor, uh, basically theater. Yeah. Um, I believe They're it's doing around it. five thousand cap. Um, they've been doing shows there, but they wow. have they they have been doing COVID precautions. Yes. Um, you know, yes. it's wear a mask in, yes. and basically what they do is they partition out squares. Oh, I so see. so it's it's not quite six feet, but. Yeah you're 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 in these squares but it was i mean it was pretty packed it was it, I mean, how many trying. uh how many people were did how many people were at the super bowl that was a lot right a i lot. mean a I, lot. I, I think a hundred thousand yeah oh my god so yeah. i mean this is what i mean this is happening in one part of the country and not the other it's very very frustrating you know what i mean but as an artist would you say go from where you are to florida quarantine for two weeks to play a show that's only got a few thousand people max there's no way to do it fiscally i mean no i mean financially like, there's yeah, no there's no, no way to do it. it there's no way to do it i mean that's you would pay well, more you would pay more you like just in your flights and hotel rooms than you would make at the gig because there's not a lot of people paying to get in so exactly now this like, is the thing i think that celebrities or people that really want to be seen somebody that's used to being in front of you know a large arena going to a small venue like that i would pay much more money for that and then you know yeah if it was known really to the general public as to what's happening to the music industry and what's happening to the artist, and truly that just because you have a YouTube video up doesn't mean you're a fucking millionaire. Right. I think that if people really understood, they would be more willing to pay the pocket money. Well, you're right, but I still don't think that that, I mean, that might, that might be okay as like a couple of one-offs, but like a lot of times, on a, like a bigger tour like you know you would play big venues and small venues and it would kind of all even itself out right to where right. like you might not make you know you might not make as much in those smaller venues that you do kind of just these one-off shows but you would make it up in at the other shows but that's that's a whole bunch of them together like through around a you know three or four weeks sort of tour right it would all kind of balance itself right. out so 
it would be tough to kind of just do these one-offs unless, you know, if you're like an already established, you know, act where, um, you know, you feel safe going and playing. I think I forget what band was it the Foo Fighters or something. Oh, I forget, but they, they, they can afford to just, you know, if they wanted to just go and do a couple one-offs yeah. and right. I, I'm maybe I'm, break even or, or whatever, but um, I'm talking to the superstars sometimes and they're all just itching to play. So I think it's a matter of like, what the hell, if I can get there, you're going to cover my cost and feed me and I'm going to be okay. I just want to freaking play music. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean the, the want the, the want and the desire is there, but but uh, what Andy's saying is is, is to get feasible. to get a band of any stature whatsoever uh, on the road or to do like you said a couple of one offs. I mean, the the average person has no idea what costs go into doing a show like that. For one, it's it's not like they just show up and <laughs> no, they get all the money. The artist actually puts up money. Yeah. You know, travel, all that stuff, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, like with Manson, we would have to do like one or two big shows just right off the bat. And then they would use that money to fund, you know, stuff the start the rest of the yeah, tour. Yeah. To, to start the, the tour. Um, because it's like, yeah, like he said, it's, it, it costs so much money. I mean, we had, um, three or four buses, a couple semis. I mean, imagine just the gas money it takes yeah. to move those yeah. vehicles. Yeah. And they're it's all diesel. Tens of thousands of dollars. Like, yeah. just just to do that. I mean, it's just like... And it's, how it's many insane. people are actually involved? Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, between, yeah, yeah all the lighting. All the, I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's an insane amount of money to do it, especially now because of, like, you know, gas and stuff. Um, and, um, speaking I have of, a what, question. What are you doing musically now, Andy? What's that? Sorry. What are you doing musically now? Uh, right now, I'm just working on a couple of original projects, and um, I do, uh, I do like some gigs out in Vegas that just kind of like pick up gigs. But I do um, my main gig is just uh, Tom Petty cover tribute band that we do that we've been doing for like a couple years, and we like travel all over the place to do it, um, and uh, it's a lot of fun, but. You know, right now, like we've we we have shows booked. We've had shows booked since the beginning of the year, and they just you know they just keep getting canceled one after the other. Mm -hmm. All our shows last year, obviously, and so now we're just kind of like we're just kind of like going week by week of like, you know, is this one going to cancel? Is this one going to cancel? So, but they have to you know they have to book the shows out so far in advance that you like plan on it, and then like a couple weeks before the show, it's like. Nope, that nope. one's canceled again. Yeah, so. that, but that's disappointing. I hate. Yeah. I feel like I feel like once I feel like once it gets going, though, I mean, it's going to be awesome. I mean, people are going to go nuts when the right. live shows come back. And you know what? If you have to wear a mask in there, um, if you if you can wear a mask and stand up with a bunch of other people and watch live music can be then fine whatever i mean whatever. i, don't think, I yeah. don't think people will care as long as they get to go i i don't know if you guys remember um or saw the benefit concert in toronto after the sars epidemic i don't remember oh wow it was absolutely huge and it happened so fast and it was um the Rolling Stones, ACDC, like just a whole bunch of huge bands thrown together in a week celebrating the, you know, good conclusion of SARS in Toronto. And I just think that's going to happen on an explosive worldwide stage. And it's going to be probably the best next decade in music history. Yeah. Just I mean, for that reason. It yeah. might be, you know, especially for live musicians, it's going to be there's going to be so much work and, and, and uh, I feel like it's going to be really good, but it's just like, like, what does that even look like as far as, you know, do you have to wear a mask? Do you have to, you know, is there going to be just like sections where you can drink? Like, I mean, it's kind of like, no one really knows what it looks like for, for, for a larger, you know, for like a larger kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping by the end of the summer, it'll be 
close. You know, it'll be close. I think next it summer... happened too in the worst time in the music industry in decades because everything is upside down. You know, um, the money is shifting in different directions. Artists aren't being supported in the way they used to be in past times, you know, and this is either going to collapse things and rebuild it in a very different way. I really hope for the better. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, well, I mean, uh, you know, musicians have been for the past few years have been relying on the touring, especially because no mm -hmm. one sells albums anymore, obviously. So I feel like especially bands i think it's going to be good for new bands because people are going to be so excited to just go out and see live music and to just be at a club you know be at a bar that yeah. it might help brand new bands who don't have a following or who are just starting and you know people are just out and about and you know it might bring in new fans for some of these bands who you know right. who who normally would be trying to start and having a rough time of it, you know? So, I mean, I'll tell you what, it can't make it worse. <laughs> yeah. it, it can't be worse than playing no shows. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll see. Well, that's, uh, that's, I, I'm hearing from a lot of, you know, people in the industry that everybody has the general consensus, like mid to end summer. Um, I, I know some of the festivals are talking about moving forward and opening up again. So yeah. I just heard actually from a few people that Valken got rescheduled again to 2022. So Who, what did Valken? Uh, Valken. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if the, if the big major festivals are like doing something, I think everybody's going to freaking fall suit, unfortunately. Well, and it's I, again, like you said, the insurance, I'm sure it depends country by country, but like, I didn't want to believe it when somebody said that last March, 2022. And I was like, oh, yeah. well, you just doomed us all. <laughs> yeah. Well, you also got to think about like a lot of those um, festivals, like in Europe and stuff, um, they rely on people traveling to, to, to them. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like you put the festival on and, if America is not doing great, as far as that means that everyone who would have come from America isn't going to show, um, or, can't and is, go. And, or, or can't, yeah, exactly, or can't go and isn't going to pay for hotels there and you know going out to eat in restaurants there and just normal touristy stuff, right? That that makes wherever those festivals are that makes them money, um, and that's just one country. And like, I mean, you know. It, the restrictions on on all the other countries too so it's kind of like they have to think about that it's like they can say okay well our country's doing great so you know we can put on normal shows but to put on a big festival we need people from all over the world to come you know and and spend money we um, only have 10 minutes left unfortunately zoom cuts us off after 40 minutes but um was there anything you wanted to talk about um i know that there's a lot of crazy stuff surrounding um, Manson right now. Is there anything you wanted to say or not say about it? Yeah, I mean, I can't really comment on any of that stuff. Okay, fair enough. Like, um, I uh, like, I feel like, um, like you don't want to take anything away from what the victims are saying, but everyone has their their sort of own experience with him i guess as far as even like being in the band being mm -hmm. his manager being anything right so i mean like you're 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 in his little bubble but there's still pockets of that bubble that you're in right so mm -hmm. i never um i was never around him when he was at his house ever i never went to his house um because i didn't live in la um so any of that stuff, I, I, I literally don't know. I have no idea. I um, think, I feel like I don't want to take sides. I don't want to, like, like you said, feel the same way. But my frustration is that it hasn't been proven one way or another. And his label and everybody is dropping him like a hot potato before knowing. And I think that there are so many artists oh. who have committed crimes, let's say, serious crimes, 
murders, rapes, drunk driving, horrible things. You know what I mean? And they're yeah. still allowed to reason? keep oh. their stuff. And I think that's where my frustration is, is I feel public persecution. The minute it stops selling records, everybody's like, whoa. And I, I'm frustrated by that one aspect of the lack, again, of label support. Yeah, I, I almost think that this is, this might be, um, I guess, this might have been building up to this a, a long time ago. Yes. Um, for him specifically or just in yeah. general? And For him specifically and, you know like it's tough man i mean like you know he like, like he said in his in his uh in his response like he said that you know his life and his art has always been you know a target for controversy and he's right i mean yes. um like when he first came out well i mean when he first came out everyone was all the you know mostly the conservative people and even my parents and blah blah, blah they were trying to cancel him from the beginning. Yes. Right. Um, yes. So I feel like, um, I feel like maybe this was just the sort of straw that broke the camel's back type of, type of thing to where it was like, you know, what, you know, it's, it's only going to take that one thing, you know, to just blanket just, all right, it's, it's, it's done type of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the the it's 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 tough because I don't know I I, I don't know what happened with those Nobody people does. and it's kind of like if they're saying that that stuff happened I mean what is especially like someone like Evan what does she get out of it she doesn't get anything out of it as far as money or anything like that to come out and and to say that stuff she has a great career it's not helping her career to you know, say that stuff. Um, so I, I don't know, man, it's, that's, it's a weird thing. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, because you could speculate all day long. It doesn't mean you have the facts. I mean, yeah. And, and it's like, it's that thing where it's always that, like, do you separate the artist from the from the art type of thing? I mean, they still play fucking Michael Jackson songs on the radio. I know, and, and I can't, I can't. That dude, Ugh. I mean, come on. Even if he yeah. didn't do the worst possible things to the kids that they say, he did something. The parents yeah. said that they went into the bedroom with him, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's weird. Yeah. But and it killed we... again something so sacred to my childhood. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, it's I, brutal, it just, man. And this is, and I can't, I, I couldn't bear it if this broke the love affair with the music that's just so damn fucking good. But we all saw publicly that he was struggling. We all saw that his lifestyle probably wasn't the most healthy thing in the world, just visually, like, wore it on his face yeah. you know you can see it yeah. and it, it was allowed to to happen you know well i like i like you know i i used to say all the time you know after i after i left the band and stuff that like you know manson was one of the last like true rock stars yes um Genius. like him scott wyland i mean these guys not that it's good or bad but they you know they lived like that rock and roll lifestyle and um it eventually will catch up to you if not yes. by killing you at least yes. by deteriorating your health and your mental you know your mental health and how um, many people have we lost how many people that we after it happens cry and the whole world goes what the fuck we have done yeah. But the people in control of you, your managers, your friends, the people making money off of you should at least be the ones taking care of you. And this is Yeah, but I usually the think, usually it's the opposite of that. Right. They're the yeah. ones, they're the yeah, ones but I mean, it, yeah, no, like yeah. this is the what I hope to God changes again with the complete collapse and rebuilding of the music industry. The responsibility of what you're doing to somebody as you make them a superstar. Wait, I well, mean, you, you have to remember that, you know, 
Manson. Oh. Brian is a real person. <laughs> not he's not just marilyn manson you know he has his own demons his own childhood his own memories and you know he's a real fucking person and most people deal with it like by going to the bar and getting too fucking shit faced or whatever you know manson just has a bigger bar and a bigger buffet and right. people saying yeah we want you to be the fabulous disaster because it sells records it sells exactly. shit exactly that's um, the thing so, yeah but uh, you <laughs> know a, again Again, these, the all these people, all these stars, Britney Spears, Manson, they all have handlers. They all have people that you know walk them from the car to the hotel. You know, it, it's it, it's kind of hard to put a leash on an artist because that's just how they are. I mean, you know, yeah, they have to, they have to, they have to want to do it themselves. Of course, I remember, I remember uh, does think, in that uh, way. In that dealing with that but i think kid rock was talking to um he was talking to howard stern and he was saying how you know once he made a bunch of money and stuff he had like you know people at his house like taking out his garbage and cleaning and blah blah and eventually he was just like it got to the point where she's like i'll, I'll fucking take out my own fucking garbage like yeah you know, like i just just live my life like you know when i'm at home i'm just that, that's what i do i fucking clean the dishes i take out the garbage like you know, and that sort of like levels you back down a, a little bit, you know, as, 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 you know, as much as someone like him could, could be, but still like, but, but he, he made that choice, you know, no one, his manager wasn't like, Hey, you need to get rid of your butlers or whatever. Like, yeah. you know, he made the choice of like, I just need to be fucking somewhat normal while I'm at home type of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, for some, for some of them, it's, it's just, it's harder, you know, is there, well, is there, there was Great talking to you. It looks yeah. like we got less than a minute. I don't want it to cut you off. Just blank screen. Yeah, oh, no okay. kidding. Yeah, I get it. I can't thank you enough for doing this. It's quite an honor to me. I've been a huge fan of you for a very long time. You can just ask anybody. But um, is there anything you'd like to say or leave off with? Um, well, I'm currently working on a couple um, a couple of uh, original projects and when those come out um maybe we can do another one of these and kind of just use that to promote something because i don't really have anything to promote right now so it's just Thank more of so just us chatting which is cool yeah like um yeah this was cool it, it actually the the other one i did um i just did another one which is funny because i've never done podcasts or anything like this before and then all of a sudden now they're just like popping up but the other <laughs> one i did was just with one person which was cool and him kind of asking questions um but this was actually a little bit more fun because it's like three of us just kind of chatting yeah um, that's i love i love kelly's format i, I was telling her so that, that, that her format of just hanging out and uh you know having like-minded musicians and people with 